Well, it's the first work day of the week. Welcome to the show. In the news, African Development Bank is set to invest $500,000 uh, towards sustainable energy in Nigeria. China and Russia are striving to boost their agricultural trade amidst the last, long-lasting China-U.S. trade war. Indian courts is corporate tax rates in an effort to spur investment and boost growth in the country's economy. On the show today, our focus is on the resolution of the Monetary Policy Committee meeting and also plans by the Ministry of Petroleum Resources to reduce Nigeria's all JVs. Welcome to the show. African Development Bank is set to invest $500,000 towards sustainable energy in Nigeria. This new private equity fund is developed by all on a Nigerian impact investment firm financed by Shell. According to the release signed by the AFDB spokesperson, Emeka Anuforo, NEAF will make strategic investments in sustainable energy in Nigeria, particularly the off-grid and mini-grid sectors. NEAF will be the first of its kind facility to provide eligible projects and businesses with equity solutions that are currently unavailable in the market. The board of directors of the bank had in 2018 approved a $200 million package to support the Nigerian electrification project designed to help scale up green mini grid solutions with subsidies amongst other measures. The Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Presilvia, says the ministry is set to increase oil and gas reserves and production, as well as revamp refineries in the country. This was the focus of the just concluded retreat with directors and executives in developing a roadmap and delivery framework for the next four years. We have details in the next report. It is a month now since President Muhammadu Buhari swore in new ministers into office, including Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Press Silva. As part of strategic meetings since assumption into office, the minister organized this two day retreat with the heads of the ministry, NNPC, and other key agencies to receive status reports and define clearly expectation, increase crude oil production to 3 million barrels per day, and effect the reduction in the cost of crude oil production by at least 5%. These all have clear deliverables to be achieved over short, medium, and long terms. A performance management framework has also been developed along with a program of monitoring output and evaluating outcomes to feed into the ministry's core card, supporting the next level agenda. Although divestment of interest in joint ventures was not an agenda at the retreat, the minister clarified the stance of government. There will be no divestment of JB interest, the federal government interest at all in our JBs at all. That was not discussed, that is not on the table at all. By October, Nigeria and Iraq are expected to trim down excess oil output by 57,000 and 175,000 barrels per day. The minister further explained the rationale behind the agreement. We are cutting 50% of our overproduction. So it was not our production that is going down by 50%. Of course, cost cutting is something that we've been discussing because, of course, government must have uh, uh, more profits from uh, oil, oil activities. And uh, you know that the bottom line is aff affected uh, ve very much by uh, the costs. Group managing director of the NNPC, Mele Kiari, while speaking on current efforts towards rehabilitation of the nation's refineries in Port Harcourt, Wari, and Kaduna to refine crude oil at optimum capacity come 2022, also touched on the efforts made on the Ilorin Depot. We're going to have product availability with around Quara State and the proximate states to Quara State. And that also means that you're going to have uh, less congestion in the Apapa area because most of the pro product supply actually come from Apapa area introduced and most of And once you decongest that, you are going to create uh, uh, less cost for PEF in the bridging cost. And not only that, and we believe very strongly that to create economic opportunities around the depot. With the agenda set now for the next four years, a monitoring team will be no, set up chaired it. by the minister to monitor the strategies developed and feed into the quarterly briefing to the Federal Executive Council. Well, Pat now with Ignite Advisory Limited, Charles Majomi joins me now via Skype from Abuja for more on this discussion. 
Now, Charles, let's start th this way. I I I'm particular about revamping the refineries to start by 2020. Uh, Dangote refineries on stream. And what we see now is NMPC going back to revamp at 2020. And many has been saying that this is not the way to go. What, how does this come to you before we look critically at other issues discussed at that retreat? I think I've said it before on your program, um, and I'll say it again. Revamping the refineries in theory, is a very good way to go because it will increase our ability to refine our products within our shores. Uh, this is a very um, necessary step if we're to eliminate the um, under-recovery program that seeks to export our raw material resources, crude oil, and import the products in a manner that's supposedly commensurate with the exports. Now. If we're to re refine, if we're to, if we're to increase our refining capacity, we won't have to do that. However, it seems to be the recurring case that this has not been achieved by previous governments. And um, as a result, if you were to ask my personal opinion, I would be very skeptical as to whether doing, following that same path will achieve any results. Now, issues about commercializing gas flaring and the passage of PIB has been on the front burner of the oil and gas sector. How well do you see this team addressing all of these challenges at this time? Well, the gas flaring commercialization program is essential. It's effectively one of the world's largest and most bold endeavors when it comes to monetizing the value that's being burnt every day from gas flare. In this regard, let me say that we are burning uh, equivalent of, of what it would, uh, in terms of gas, um, that is equal to um, uh, uh, a capacity that could be used to power our homes, to fuel vehicles, 700,000 vehicles a day, to give employment to people in the Niger Delta where those flares are occurring, to alleviate the, um, the great human burden that comes from incessant gas flares, the environmental damage, etc. So it's critical. I think it's very, very um, um, good to hear that in his recent um, uh, um, uh, uh, press release to, the, to uh, the, the, the current minister said that gas flare commercialization will be among three or four key items that he will focus on. So I'm a big believer in it. I think it will take the concerted efforts of communities, governments, uh, working in tandem with the Nigerian commercialization, uh, gas flare commercialization program to make it happen. I think there is definitely um, uh, potential in this program and it has my full support. On joint ventures, uh, uh, Charles, I'd I, I like to get your views on this reducing. Uh, the minister has said this is his priority. Uh, what do you make of the joint ventures? What we have on ground and what are we supposed to have? Well, what the minister is saying effectively is that Nigeria is mulling, reducing its exposure uh, from 60% uh, in joint venture arrangements with um, local and international oil companies to 40 percent. Now, um, this is really as a result of the fact that um, Nigeria's fiscal condition is very, very poor. In fact, we are currently funding um, uh, uh, 70, 73 percent of our budget is to fund recurrent expenditure, which leaves very little room for government to make spending on critical um, areas such as um, developing the infrastructure in a manner that will increase local productivity, create jobs, and alleviate the poverty of millions of Nigerians. Having said that, um, uh, we should also understand that from like the $3.1 million that is accruable from crude oil and gas sales, um, about half, just over half of that is going to cash call, to fund cash call arrears, which is not sustainable anymore. Cash call is a um, is a thing whereby uh, the uh, the operators, I mean the operations of a particular asset, are funded by the owners of that asset in a manner that's proportionate to their equity in that particular asset. 
So what we're doing effectively is we're saying we can no longer continue to fund our cash call arrears. We're underspending in terms of the, um, the, uh, the strategy that government has to developing growth and infrastructure um, uh, to drive the growth and development of the economy. And as a result, we must look for additional income beyond our traditional income sources. Again, this is kind of an indictment because what it shows you is that we have been too reliant on one particular thing to, de to derive our income from, and that is crude oil. And now, because we have substantially mismanaged other aspects of the economy, even that golden goose has to be trimmed down in order for us to be able to grow. In real terms, what this amounts to, however, is government is going to lose about three and a half billion dollars a year from that 20% in revenues. Um, what they're seeking to get is about, raise is about 34 billion dollars now. The question then becomes, how is government going to spend that 34 billion dollars in a manner that impacts the economy favorably such that it alleviates poverty for millions of Nigerians, okay. develops the and develops the, the, the infrastructure that would underpin that kind of growth. Okay. Charles, let's 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 look at cutting production. That's fifty percent of overproduction. That's been cleared by the minister. And also trying to increase our reserves, uh, which is also a move that the NNPC and the Fed Ministry of Petroleum Resources is trying to do increasing daily production and also increasing reserves. How well do you see us getting this right? At the same time, we try to diversify the economy. I think when you're talking about increasing production and, and, and reserves, you have to look at Nigeria in its current uh, global context. Nigeria is no longer the darling of the world when it comes to petroleum uh, or oil production, um, especially on our continent. Even though we still are the largest producer, um, activities on the African Eastern Seaboard, as well as in, within West Africa and Angola and Ghana, are definitely going to catch up with us. You had mentioned, for example, the, the, the petroleum industry bill. Well, Ghana has been able to pass its own version pretty speedily, which has underpinned um, the, uh, the development of the industry, encouraged or incentivized investment into the area. We're still dawdling. Uh, we haven't come up with a, um, even a watered-down version of the Petroleum Industry Bill in the form of the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill. So, in my view, uh, while the aspiration is good, we have to enable the fiscal uh, um, uh, aspects that will make that thing happen that are enshrined in the Petroleum Industry Bill. We also have to come to a way of reducing production costs. Nigeria has the largest, among the largest uh, production costs in the world. I think it's about $30 on each barrel. For us to be attractive as a producer and for the government to be able to derive the kind of benefits that it wants to from this added production, uh, we have to be able to, be, to optimize and, and bring down our, the cost of our production as well. So I'm looking at fiscal enablers and also operational enablers that will allow that thing to happen in a manner that will uh, impact favorably on the Nigerian government. Okay, there, Charles, uh, Majomi, there, oil and gas expert. Thank you uh, very much for your time. Okay, we are having. Okay. Okay, we are having. Uh, Okuku now standing by is a financial analyst live from Abuja there. We should be engaging him uh, to discuss more about the resolutions after the Monetary Policy Committee meeting. And uh, thank you very much for your time for joining us live from our Abuja studios. I'm sure it's no more news that you know that all rates were left retained. Uh, I don't know how that came to you uh, when you heard that resolution being read out by the CBN governor on Friday. Yeah, it wasn't um, anything new for me. I mean, it was expected because, I mean, if you are looking at the economy, if you're, if you're watching the economy closely, you will see that um, the, growth, the growth rate is still very fragile. And then the, 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 the um, other, other factors that will actually make MPC want to change the rates are still 
not looking as good as they should. I mean, looking at the internal and the external factors, considering um, all, all the, 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 the issues in the Middle East, the, 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 the fight, the trade fight between, um, I use the word fight, between the US and um, the China, the China their, their highest trading partners. So you can see that a lot of volatility in the, in, in the, in the, in the global economy and then here, the growth, uh, the growth rate is still very, you know, fragile. So I, I see, I, I didn't see any reason why the, the, the central bank, the MPC, should change the rates. Now, I'd like to ask you this straight. Do you think the central bank can save this economy at this time? You see, I, I, this is where I, I think we always get it wrong. It is not their job to save the economy. It is actually their job to defend the economy. To save the economy, you need the, those are the physical, uh, the physical managers to come up with programs to support whatever defending mechanism that they, the central bank is setting up. For example, you see the central bank is busy bringing out interventions to support the agri sector, the real sector to you know, bring out policies to see how the deposit money banks can lend more to the private sector. They are also there trying to advise the, the, the government on what to do and what not to do. So for the economy to come out of its of the, the quagmire or whatever issues that we are having, we need those who have just been given the, you know, the, 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 given the responsibility to advise the government, those who are, who are managing the economy to come up with very creative, uh, very creative ideas on how to run the, you know, you know, to support or to, or to augment what the central bank is doing. Without that, I don't think um, the central bank alone cannot, cannot make it happen in conjunction with the fiscal side of government. Let's look at the banks now. They have a role to play in all of this and as where the central bank superintends over. Now, uh, a lot of moves trying to improve lending credits among the rail sector or to promote the economy and everyone is saying that is a step in the right direction. How well do you see all of this playing out as we move on impacting on the economy? That's what Nigerians really want to see. Of course, yeah. Giving them, um, uh, you know, deposit to lending ratio, to, uh, you know, to uh, sixty percent, that's a good move. Although it's still not, it's still not uh, enough considering the size of the economy. And then again, the 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 the, the, the checklist should also include that they have to also learn to new ideas. Mm -hmm. See, what I see happening at the end of the day, because I can see a lot of banks still meeting the threshold, which is, um, you know, that 60% uh, uh, you know, deposit to lending ratio. But the thing is, are they lending to new transactions? Are they lending to new ideas? So these are the things that central mm -hmm. banks need to also look at make them understand that yes there are, a lot, there are already established entities who they don't need to move from where they are to still make profit but there are new ideas there are new concepts there are people who want to come in to become players but they don't have the way without to come in so you can't lend to them which is the smes like i always i always put it they are the new bride so these are, they are the ones who are going to expand the economy. They are the ones who are going to bring the growth. They are the ones who will also help generate the employment that is much needed in the economy. So I think the, 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 the expectations from the banks should just go beyond the threshold given to them, which is the, 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 the deposit to lending ratio, which should also increase. But we also go beyond that to ask them to learn to new ideas. I know they also have issues because I mean All because right. we don't have data in our country, All so it right. might be very difficult for them to learn to those who are not known yes. because oh, they always oh. say monies are given to those oh, known bona, and bona, not to those oh, who are not known. Economic development experts live from Abuja Studios. Thank you very much for sharing your Monday with us on Business Nigeria. All right, thanks for having me. All right, now we'll take a break, and when we return, of course, we have more for you. If you're standing by the exchange, let's see what's playing out downtown Lagos. Don't go away, it's your business, Nigeria.
Jacob, how are you? Let's have a cup here today. I'm fine. But can you make sense? Ah. Uh. A cup. So are you fine? Oh boy. Oh boy. How you, you doing? Know, you need to see where I see you on a whole big screen. You can't find. Thank you for staying with us. Market editor Michael Effiong Ekop joins us now live on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange to bring us up to speed with a trading pattern for the day. El Hello, Effiong. Ah, tell us what happened at the end of the day, the first work day of the week. I'm almost rounding up the month of September. How did it play out? Ah, Tolu, we had a very poor trade on the floor today. The market was down. Big cap sales, Dango Cement, and Access Bank. They were able to take some other ones downward. And, uh, you know, funds flowing to market sectors, very low. Um, so there was uh, that uh, uh, tendency to feel dejected at the close of uh, business. The Ocean Index was down by a quarter of a percentage point. And that was big enough for, you know, a day that starts uh, the week. So uh, you asked me if we looked to uh, the week coming, we seem to be nursing a uh, negative uh, feeling that um, it's not that uh, rosy. And we are feeling the pain because money is not flowing into the market sectors as uh, we would have loved to say it. So stocks are really cheap, but investors are not patronizing. They are not taking advantage of uh, the cheap windows that are available here in the markets. That's how we saw Monday. Oh, so for, for following the inauguration of the advisory committee, that's the Economic Advisory Committee, headed by Professor Doin Salami. Uh, yes, I know it's it's too early to start judging the idea to get to work, but many expect that maybe that confidence expected in this country might start coming back. Bismarck Rewine is part of this team, and notable economists that everybody believes will be able to chart a new course for this economic team as they move on. Uh, what are expectations? What are you hearing? from traders, stockbrokers, about this decision of the government? To look out here, that is uh, one option that is available that, uh, I may say, can give us a uh, hope. If the advisory committee comes up with something definite and bring up policy that the government will need to, you know, assist us here in the market, it will be fine. But, uh, except that we have not been doing very well from January till now, and looking to the last quarter of the year, if we look back to what we've seen in the last uh, uh, eight months or so, except the advisory committee comes up with something definite and positive, then th there is no way that the market uh, will look up. Because the market is being depressed, hearing political wranglings and political stories all through. Nothing in the real economic sense is able to energize the market. So. The frightening political, uh, you know, sidelines that uh, we hear, that's the thing disturbing us. So let the advisory committee, you know, look to the market, look to the All larger right economy, then. you know, bring out things that we want to hear. All right, then. Thank you very much. Uh, if you get caught, my colleague, there live from the exchange. Yeah, well, that's all we can take. That's our show today. Thank you for watching. Let's see again tomorrow, same time, and continue the discussion. Enjoy the rest of your day.